So first, the first thing that I want to do as we hop into into this workshop is really uh, is to really talk about large language models themselves and help you all build up a kind of mental model for how these large language models work. Don't worry, I'm not going to show any crazy math formulas or anything. Uh, but I think for all of us, because all of us use these models now, um, even in our personal lives, it's useful to gain a little bit of a, an intuition about, about how they work. Uh, so that's, that's what we're going to do now. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to pull up something here. So this is just a private chat interface that I have, um, that's running a bunch of different models through, through our system prediction guard. And, um, what I'm going to do is just give a query and say, go is something. All right. And you can see the kind of standard thing that you might get from any sort of, looks like it truncated there. Let's just change a setting. I'll rerun this. You can see kind of the standard thing that you might get from a chat GPT like interface, uh, maybe some good information about Go. Uh, Go is a programming language. So what's what's actually happening under the hood here? We're, we're using this model, uh, Llama 3 model. Uh, which is a family of models that Meta released as as open access L LLMs or large language models. But let's let's gain a little bit more intuition for for what's going on under the hood here. So here's what I just showed you: um, an output from one of these large language models. And here I'm focusing on large language models because really um, there are more multimodal things going on and multimodal meaning like text plus images plus video will be increasingly interesting. But the majority of the kind of real world enterprise use cases where people are finding enterprise value is related to large language models. So that's what we're going to focus on uh, for the most part. So when, when I use this model, so when I use Llama 3 here, um, what's happening is I put in this input, right? Go is something. And it came out with Go as a programming language, blah, blah, blah. It, it completed it, right? So just some jargon. This is generally called a prompt, uh, this kind of left side, what I put into the model. And then the completion is what the language model output out the other side. So if we dig in a little bit here, what's happening is this prompt is going into the large language model. Now this might be a GPT model or Claude from Anthropic. In our case, it was Llama 3. And then what the model is doing is nothing more than, although it's it can be quite powerful when we apply it appropriately, it's predicting a next word or next token. So um, so the, the model is taking those first two words, go is, and it's computing actually a probability for every other word or every other token or subword that it knows about. And then it's looking at the most probable of those and adding that as its first token or word in the completion. And then it, we just sort of keep on going. We iterate around this. You saw that text stream onto the screen. We just start iterating on that. So my first word might be A. And then secondly, it just adds that to the prompt and then says, well, what's the next most probable word? And maybe the first most probable word after that is programming. The least most word is flea or something like that. And so it just keeps going like this, filling in the output. Now here, what's interesting is you can basically tell that this is autocomplete. This is like autocomplete on steroids. It's a big, big model that does autocomplete. So how can that possibly be useful for all of these many things that people are using AI for? Well, if you take the whole internet of text and a bunch of also curated text, that gives a bunch of examples of blog posts and co uh, coding documentation and uh, literature and all sorts of things, pod podcast transcripts, all of those things that are across the internet, then all of a sudden this model gets can get really, really good at predicting a lot of different kinds of text. And if I add in an additional layer on that to kind of add in an instruction to the model, 
then it can produce very probable outputs given a certain instruction. So what can happen is I can do question answering here. So we do a bit of uh, customer service for my wife's company, Antique Candle Co. And uh, they make candles. So customer service, I could prompt the I could prompt the model and say, answer this question based on the given context. And I could paste in some context from some previous chat messages or something and then have it give an answer. And so it, it's very useful at, at, at that. But also I could just create a general chat assistant. I could provide an instruction to be helpful and friendly and I get kind of a general chat sort of thing. But I can also do really interesting things. Like I, I hope all of you are using, you know, Codium or GitHub Copilot or something like this, if you're able to. In my code editor, VS Code, um, I can just, under the hood, Codium or Copilot, it's giving a prompt, you know, something like this where, hey, generate me a script that does this thing. And then I can output a completion of, of code. You can output completions of SQL. You can output completions that format text from one format to another to do code translation, to do document summary. I mean, you all have seen all of the amazing, the amazing use cases that are here. And this is why people have started talking about these models as a sort of co-pilot. 